The Chupacabra is one of the most well-known cryptids on the planet, right up there with the Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, and the Jersey Devil. The literal translation of Chupacabra is Goat Sucker, which should give you some idea of how strange this creature is. But unlike other legends of vampiric beasts that have been around since ancient times, the Chupacabra is a relative newcomer. The first real sightings were only reported in the 90s, which has led many paranormal researchers to believe that this is some kind of man-made creation. Could this creature be the result of a genetic experiment gone wrong? Can it be explained by science? Does the Chupacabra even exist? Let's find out. The sheer number of alleged Chupacabra sightings is stunning, and people in the Americas have been dealing with this cryptid for decades. The first known report of a Chupacabra sighting was in 1975, when the small town of Mocha in Puerto Rico suffered an onslaught of killings by some kind of vampiric creature. Initially, residents believed that a satanic cult was responsible for the large number of dead animals. Each animal was found with small incisions and bled dry. The scientific term for this blood-sucking process is desanguinization. During the 70s, at least one dead animal in Texas was found under similar circumstances. Something had clearly killed these animals. But what was it? No one seemed to have any answers, including the local government in Puerto Rico. Farmers and residents were deeply concerned, and rumors started to spread about El Vampiro de Moca, or the Vampire of Moca. Unfortunately for the residents of Puerto Rico, the story of the Chupacabra was only the beginning. In 1995, one of the most famous Chupacabra sightings occurred in the Puerto Rican town of Canovanas, when a woman named Madeline Tolentino reportedly saw the creature with her own eyes. At this point, no one was using the word Chupacabra just yet. Tolentino and other Puerto Rican witnesses described the Chupacabra as a hybrid between a human and an animal with huge red eyes an upright posture, and three fingers on each hand. It was also described as hopping on its hind legs like a kangaroo. In addition, Tolentino said that the creature didn't have any ears or nose, and that it had spikes on its back. This was after the creature reportedly killed over 150 farm animals. Sheep, pets, and other animals were all found completely drained of blood and each body had three puncture wounds in the chest area. News of the attacks spread fast, and Puerto Rican comedian Silverio Perez first coined the term Chupacabra. The name stuck, and more people started to report the dead animals killed in a similar fashion. Although Puerto Rico suffered the worst, other nations began to draw the attention of the chupacabra as well. By the end of the 90s, thousands of animals had apparently been killed by the chupacabra, and once again, these animals were found to be bled dry with small puncture wounds. One witness from Puerto Rico stated, I think it belongs to the monkey family, but it wasn't a monkey exactly. It ran like a monkey, and it was about four feet tall, but it didn't have a tail. Over the next few years, more eyewitnesses started to describe a much smaller creature, possibly suggesting that there were actually two different cryptids killing animals in Puerto Rico. Sightings began to spread to places like Miami and Mexico. One Miami woman reported seeing a dog-like creature standing on its hind legs with short, thin hands. Around this time, Mexican residents reported many small mammals being killed and some managed to spot the chupacabra. These eyewitnesses describe something very similar to what Tolentino had spotted a year earlier. However, the descriptions also started to become more varied, 
reports of the smaller, four-legged cryptids continued. And one town in Mexico even described a winged creature terrorizing their town. In a 1996 article published by the Tampa Bay Times, it was reported that in the Calderon village of Sinaloa in Mexico, goats were being discovered daily, with all of their blood sucked out. The article also suggested that one resident had been attacked by the creature. A villager stated, We are telling people to keep the women and children locked up inside at night. No one really knows what it is. Over the next few months, Similar accounts of a winged creature continued to spread throughout Mexico, particularly in the Sinaloa region. During this period, witnesses also described the creature as having a snake-like tongue for sucking out blood. They also stated that it emitted a sulfur-like smell. Since the turn of the millennium, there have been many more sightings across the Americas. Today. Thousands of people have reportedly seen the chupacabra. In 2011, it was reported that a Texan teenager had seen one of the creatures and had managed to shoot it three times. The boy's father then looked at the dead animal, later telling reporters that it looks nothing like I have personally seen ever before. In 2017 alone, there were dozens of chupacabra sightings in places like Texas, Honduras, Argentina, Ecuador, and even South Carolina. That year, a woman reported seeing a chupacabra near Riverside, California, describing it as having a rat-like tail and rippled, pinkish skin. A strange, unnamed creature was allegedly to blame for killing 35 animals in Honduras during 2017, and eyewitnesses stated that it had the ability to disappear at will. In 2017, more winged, bat-like creatures were reported in Argentina. Of all the theories, one thing is for sure. Something killed thousands of animals in Puerto Rico during the 90s. So what was it? Researchers have suggested many theories over the decades. The common consensus among the mainstream scientific community is that many of these so-called chupacabras are simply coyotes, foxes, possums, or raccoons with mange. Mange is a disease that causes animals to lose their hair, resulting in a strange, alien-like appearance. The most in-depth investigation into the chupacabra phenomenon was coordinated by Benjamin Radford, who wrote the book Tracking the Chupacabra. Radford managed to track down Madeline Tolentino, the woman who reported one of the first ever chupacabra sightings. According to Redford, this woman was largely influenced by a science fiction film she had seen weeks earlier, and her description of the chupacabra matches the appearance of a monster featured in the movie. The movie is the 1995 sci-fi flick Species, which featured a human-alien hybrid terrorizing the planet. Radford also claimed that there was nothing particularly strange about the animals that were discovered drained of blood as this can be explained by the natural decomposition process. Biologists have pointed out that small puncture wounds are commonly found in nature, as animals use their canine teeth to kill their prey. But why were the animals left unconsumed? Researchers have stated that it might be boiled down to inexperienced predators. So mystery solved, right? Here's the thing. Many different creatures seem to fall under the general umbrella of Chupacabra. As far as we can tell, there are three different creatures that have been referred to as Chupacabras. Firstly, there's the alien-like creature described by Tolentino and other Puerto Ricans during the 90s. Secondly, there's the smaller, four-legged creature that pops up towards the late 90s. And lastly, we have the mysterious winged creature which is perhaps the rarest version of the chupacabra. When it comes to the four-legged variant, the explanation may simply be mange. But that still leaves us with the earlier, larger chupacabra sighting. And it seems as though this creature is a different beast altogether. So what exactly is it? This is where things get a little strange. As far as paranormal theories go, 
there are two main schools of thought. The first theory is that this is some kind of alien creature. Some researchers believe that the chupacabra could be a type of alien pet that was separated from its owners and left on Earth. Think of it like an alien's dog, only creepier and more destructive. The second theory is much more viable, and involves secret experiments carried out by the US military. The truth is that we have been carrying out genetic experiments on animals for quite some time now, and among other things, scientists have been trying to create chimeras. These are mixtures between two different animal species, or in slightly more disturbing examples, mixtures between people and animals. Don't believe us? In 2019, Japan approved the first ever human-animal embryo experiments. The goal was to create animals filled with human organs that can be removed and transplanted into patients who need them. Bioethics immediately raised concerns, arguing that the human DNA could cause these animals to develop human-like brains. In other words, we could end up creating creatures that are conscious and self-aware. Around this time, it was also reported that a team from the Salk Institute in California had successfully created half-human, half-monkey embryos. Earlier, in 2017, the Salk Institute created human-pig embryos. But could the chupacabra really be some kind of chimera, a genetic experiment gone wrong? One of the first chimeras ever created was a goat-sheep hybrid in 1984 more than 10 years before the chupacabra first appeared. Chimera experiments may be mainstream science today, but there have been many top secret projects that were being kept out of the public eye during the 90s. Consider the fact that Puerto Rico has long been one of the most favored test sites for US military technology. In the 50s and 60s, Agent Orns was tested and stored on the island. Later, residents sued the military for being unlawfully exposed to these toxic chemicals. The Navy continues to test various weapons in Puerto Rico to this day. What if the Chupacabra escaped from some kind of top secret military base on the Caribbean island? What if the military successfully created some kind of half-human creature and it somehow got loose? One thing is for sure. Military technology is always a few generations ahead of civilian technology. If we're just now beginning to hear about half-human embryos today, there's a good chance that these experiments were already taking place a few decades ago. Unconfirmed reports state that a blood sample was recovered from a dead chupacabra in Puerto Rico. And this blood sample consisted of human, A-type blood with an Rh factor. But according to one report, the blood sample also showed features that were inconsistent with any known animal species. Perhaps we'll never know the true nature of the chupacabra, but something has been killing thousands of animals over the past few decades, and so far, no one has been able to come up with any real explanations.